Oh, well. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to get started, gang. I, I like to wait a couple minutes because I know sometimes agent time is the same as Mexico time. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> not because of laziness or anything. No, I don't mean that. Just because of busy schedules and whatnot. But uh, I do like to respect pe people's time as yeah. well. So um, I'm excited. There's a brand new class today. So I'm excited to put out some new material uh, we are going to cover today. We're going to jump into command and uh, we are actually going to create a, a listing packet. And I'm, I'm going to kind of preface that actually with a pre-listing packet. I know I didn't advertise that on the uh, on the class title, uh, but it kind of goes hand in hand. And so hopefully coming out of today, you're going to be able to walk away with either uh, two, two takeaways, two, two items you can take away, or the knowledge on how to go and create two takeaways. Either way is good. So, uh, you know, everybody learns their own way. So if you like to just watch and, and soak it in and take notes, feel free to do that. If you're the type of person, you know, you want to pull up command and kind of go along with me, that's cool too. Never like to tell everybody how to learn or not learn, but either way is totally okay. Um, give me just one sec here. I'm going to pull up command and we will get rocking, team. There we go. Get a little screen share going here. All right. Can everybody see that okay? Hopefully. Thumbs up. I got nodding heads. Okay. Nodding heads and thumbs up are good. <laughs> um, and also, gang, you know, feel free, you know, as we're going through stuff today, feel free to, to come off a of mute and uh, throw out any questions. Uh, that's the nice thing about having a smaller class size. You know, you don't have to push off the Q&A until the very end. Uh, so feel free to just pop those out there as we're going along. So uh, hopefully everybody can see my command screen. Uh, there's always one thing I like to do before we go and create any marketing projects. Uh, there's one thing that I always have everybody do. I think we're pushing, what, Joe, close to 300 agents now, almost 300 agents here, almost 300 at consultants. So uh, gang, I, I've got people, I never assume to know what people have done or not done. So I, I don't ever do this to say, hey, you know, you should have had this done or, or maybe you think, well, why is David asking me this? Um, I just like to make sure you got your stuff set up right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the command menu right up there, your headshot and your name. You got that little arrow. Click on that and it'll give you command menu. And then we're going to go down to where it says settings. Going to go ahead and click on that. And when you first come in here, you're just going to see all the apps that you're connected to, you know, DocuSign or DotLoop or both like me. Um, but if you look over on the left-hand side, you've got some other settings. You've got general settings, command settings. Uh, the next one says connect settings. I'm going to go ahead and click on that down arrow. And when you click on connect settings, you're going to see that your marketing profile shows up. So we're going to go in and we're going to spend a little bit of time in our marketing profile. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And uh, just to give you the lowdown on this, gang, when, whenever you create anything in Command, uh, it's a great program. It's very robust. I mean, it's not just a, a, a you know database. It's not just a CRM. We've got all of our social media, our uh, so, social media posts, social media ads, email campaigns, texting campaigns. I mean, all kinds of great stuff in here you can do for your marketing. Um, but if you were to go off and create those things, you know, your agent website, your landing page, one by one, you would constantly be putting in the same information over and over again, your name, your phone number, your email address, your website, your headshot photo, okay? So the great thing about the marketing profile within Command is that you go in here, you basically set it up one time, and then it just grabs all your information for all of the marketing stuff you do, and it transfers it over automatically, okay? So you'll see here, uh, it even says that up at the top, marketing profile will help you create marketing content easier and faster. So uh, easy is good. And if you're fast too, you know, that that's that means you're being effective and efficient. That's a win-win in my book. Uh, I always tell everybody, make sure that this setting over here on the right, it says use my information to brand my agent site. That should be turned on by default. Uh, go ahead, make sure you check it though. Uh, it should be turned on and it'll be green. Uh, but if it's in the other position or, or not green, then go ahead and flip that over so it can pull your information over, okay? Uh, I'm just going to scroll down real quick. I won't spend too much time here, but some of the information that you put in your marketing profile, you've got your headshot photo that is required. Uh, I always do like to bring up that um, the photos, uh, it gives you a little tip here. They must be JPEGs or PNG. That's just the file formats for your photos, but it must be smaller than one megabyte. I like to bring that up because a lot of times people go and they get new headshots or, you know, we've had some photo shoots that go on here in the office. And, uh, 
sometimes when you get those those raw or those original photos back from the photographer, uh, the file sizes can be rather large. So you're gonna have to decrease those to one megabyte. Um, any computer, whether you're a PC or an Apple, uh, you should have a basic photo editor on there that'll let you, you know, decrease that. If you don't know how to do it, hey, call me and I will either help you do it or I'll just do it for you, okay? Um, I've been using Photoshop since it came out in the 90s, so I can certainly help you uh, knock down the resolution on your photos, okay? Uh, you've got a team logo that's available. If you are on a team, the same uh, file and, and uh, file size uh, notes there. Down below, you've got some more details. Anything with a red asterisk, uh, asterisk, whew, say that five times fast, uh, red asterisk, <laughs> uh, that is a required field. So make sure you do have that info in there. So you've got your first name, last name. You can put in your agent license number. Uh, if you're on a team, if you're not on a team, you want to put in the office, KW Consultants Realty, that's cool. Uh, your actual job title, mostly realtor for everybody. Um, any professional uh, designations or accreditations that you have, feel free to put those in there. Uh, command does kind of a, a sample bio for you. You can see that in here. Why choose me as your agent? If I scroll down here, you can see, you know, there, there's a lot of information you can actually put in there. Um, it's okay to leave it there, but I would recommend that at some point in time, you go ahead and you come in and you update and personalize this for yourself. Uh, make sure that you add things that you specialize in. I always like to point that out, you know, like Troy's in commercial. We've got some people in, in luxury uh, real estate, uh, even down to if you are bilingual. We had a, a, an agent that's bilingual that actually got a phone call uh, because they had listed on there that they speak English and Spanish. I don't know if the deal went through, but hey, that's not a bad reason to get a phone call from somebody because um, you've got some additional skills, Okay. Uh, continuing to scroll down, we've got areas for phone numbers, office phone, fax number. There's your email address, your website, whether that's your kw.com website or if you have a team site like a lot of our teams do. Uh, down below, you've got a place for your market center logo. Uh, I do like to ask everybody, please write this down as a homework assignment to make sure that you have the correct uh, logo, the market center logo uploaded to your marketing profile. Joan can back me up on this, but we've had some incidences of some... Uh, some violations with the Columbus Board of Realtors lately for improper branding, quote unquote. Um, and we definitely want to help you guys avoid doing that. So uh, if you would just go to kwcresources.com. Again, that's kwcresources.com. Uh, Angela set that page up for us and that's got all our great uh, resource information for all of our agents, all the leadership contact info were in there, my calendar link to set up appointments, but also there's a link for our Google Share Drive where you can get all of the uh, Keller Williams Consultants logos as well. Make sure that you do have the proper and updated logo because it has changed over the last few years. All right. And uh, the folders, when you, you do go in there, they are arranged by how you use it. it used to say like RGB and CMYK. It's kind of confusing for people. So now we have them on there as, you know, print material or high resolution or digital and web so you can kind of tell by usage which one you need, but definitely make sure that that logo is up to date, please. Um, all of your market center info over on the right hand side. Uh, if we keep on scrolling down, we've got some an area for compliance for your legal footer text, whether it's text, a link, or a uh, graphic is optional. Uh, your social media uh, websites, those are optional, but I would recommend putting those in there uh, to move over to your stuff. And if you don't have, let's say you don't have an Instagram or a Twitter page, I ran, I've told people I ran the Twitter page over at CB Richard Ellis for about 13 years. And between doing that and uh, our ex-president, Mr. Trump, I am done with tweeting. I will never tweet again as long as I live. Won't get into the politics, but I think you guys know what I mean. I'm just done with Twitter. Does not mean that it's not a viable resource. I just don't have a page. But what I chose to do was to put the KWRI Twitter page in there. Or if you don't have a YouTube channel, you know, go even, even more hyper local and put in the KW Consultants web, uh, YouTube page in there. Okay. Um, so that way it shows you got a great social media presence, but you don't have to update those pages, which is good. Okay. So that's your marketing profile gang. Just uh, the last thing that you should have down there. I don't have one. I'm my disclaimer. I'm not an agent, but if you scroll down, uh, you should see that you have a, uh, your KW branded app link as well. Uh, you should definitely have that set up. Uh, that should be right down here underneath the Google Analytics ID. If you do not have that set up, by all means, get a hold of me. I can help you walk through that process of getting it set up. Uh, you want to have your branded link. It's just like our Zillow or our Realtor.com app, our, our consumer-facing app. And when uh, your clients or people, you know, actually use your app and sign into that, 
you get notifications and command in the background on kind of what they're doing. I always tell everybody, it's, you know, don't stalk people on, on Facebook or social media in person. That's creepy and weird. Okay. <laughs> but if you have a KW branded app and it's for business purposes, that's okay to kind of see in the background that, Hey, David's looking for houses in Hilliards that, you know, David saved two houses in Hilliards, et cetera. Okay. All right. So that's our marketing profile. Uh, without any further ado, now that we've gotten that taken care of, we are going to go over here to the design applet. Uh, if you scroll down all these navigation links, we call them applets. If you ever hear that, just don't freak out. It's just these navigation links. We're going to go down to the one that looks like the paintbrush and the, the drawing board. That's our design area. And it's been a while since I've done this. A lot of our training lately has been focused on digital, strictly digital stuff because a lot of people are asking about websites and landing pages, social media and social media ads, et cetera. But today we're gonna go kind of old school and we're gonna do an actual print campaign. Now, the cool thing about doing these, uh, the pre-listing packet and the listing packet is that you can save it as a pre PDF and you can certainly uh, print those out high quality or whether here in the office or you know via a print shop or you wanna add nice covers, et cetera. Um, but of course you get it as a PDF as well. So that then you can email it off to somebody. You can put that as a, an, a downloadable attachment uh, on a web page or something somewhere. So it, it's still a great tool to use. I had people asking me, do people still print out? And I said, yes, my office is right here by the printers. I guarantee you over the holidays, those things were running, uh, Joan can attest, they were running almost nonstop, people printing out all kinds of stuff for the holidays, okay? So gang, that's what we're gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna jump in first. We're gonna learn how to do a pre-listing packet. It's actually very similar. Uh, to the listing packet. So I'm going to go down here on the bottom right in our design area. You've got this big plus sign. Okay. I'm going to click on that plus sign down there and it's going to open up this window that asks me which, which design would you like to create? Well, we're going to go with a print campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and click on print and then click on next. And it's going to launch us into the KW We Brand Studio, which this is our design studio. Uh, we are up between all of the print, social media, email campaigns. I believe we're up to about 1,500 different templates now. I mean, gang, if you're not utilizing this design studio, you're really missing out on a key resource that we have here at KW. There's some great content here, okay? Uh, just to give you a couple examples while we're here, uh, I'm already on the listing presentations, but, you know, here's KW app. Uh, there's stuff where you can actually advertise out to people to download your app. You've got all kinds of listing uh, coming soon for sale, just listed, open house templates that are available. Uh, the one at the very bottom I always like to show, oh, sorry, let me move my Zoom window out of the way. Uh, if you go to the bottom on under collections when you're doing social media stuff, this is where you'll normally find like the holiday stuff uh, that's down there as well. It's not showing up now because we're in print design, but you guys get the idea. There's lead generation, buyer stuff as well, buyer presentations, neighborhood snapshots, et cetera, okay? So we're gonna go over here to, to listing presentations. Uh, we've got five different templates. There used to be only two, but they've updated with some other ones. And quite honestly, gang, um, th there is a little bit of difference in the content on these, but for the most part, uh, the big differences boil down to just the look of the template. Could be the graphics, the stock photos that they use, kind of the fonts and the format, et cetera. If you like a lot of photo rich stuff or you'd rather have, you know, text rich information, et cetera. But what I always like to point out to everybody, if you come to each one of these and just pause your cursor, see how I pause my cursor on those and some options show up. If I go down here on this first one and I click on these three little dots on the lower right hand side of that template and I click on it, I'm going to get a couple different options. Well, maybe you just want to view the template without actually going into it, okay? You can actually click on the download button, and that's, I'm going to do that now just to show you. Okay, it's downloading it for me. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you a PDF preview of the template just as is with all the kind of blank or generic information uh, that's in there, not personalized to you, obviously. There we go. Okay, give me just one sec. I'm uh, just scanning for viruses. And boom, down the lower left here, I have my PDF. I'll go ahead and open that up. And let me just, uh, hang on just a second. It's always fun when the menus are, there we go. I want to just zoom out a little bit. <laughs> the zoom menus get my way when I'm teaching sometimes. <laughs> there we go. 
So now I'm just going to scroll through just real quick, gang, so you can kind of see like the, the style on this one. This one's kind of nice, you know, it's branded KW, of course, so it's got our, our yellow and white on there. The other, some of the other ones focus on the black, et cetera. Uh, you can notice this has got, you know, just nice format. It's got some photos in there. Okay. But this is, if I go all the way to the bottom, I'm scrolling slow there. I'm just going to get way, way, way down here to the bottom. If I go all the way down to the bottom, this is actually 29 pages long. It's, it's pretty big, okay? Uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, I'm going to teach you the method that I do for the listing packets is kind of to break this up so that you've got a pre-listing packet, and that's literally going to be just generic information uh, that you never, ever have to change. Literally, unless like a statistic or something changes, you should be able to send that to every single client you have as a pre-listing packet. Honestly, the only thing you'll ever need to change is their names on page one, okay? Then I'm gonna break it up and we're gonna do the actual listing presentation, which is going to have the actual specific listing information there. So that, that's kind of our what we're gonna do here today, okay? Hopefully that gave you a, a good look at it anyways. Um, I'm gonna go over here, gang. I do like the ones that have, this is just my preference after taking a look at all these, download them, look at the PDFs. I really do like this last one's better with the photos and everything. Um, I'll tell you why I stay away from this black one. You could change it, of course, but that black background, it really does suck a lot of ink uh, on your ink cartridges. Um, so uh, it, it, if you wanna do it, I would actually say, you know, have that professionally sourced. Uh, it looks good when you print it here in the office. Uh, but again, it just drains the toner. So I'm going to go this last one over here on the right. And again, when I pause it, all these options show up. I'm just going to click on this pencil that says use. And we are going to go right into that template and get some work done. All right. Uh, one of the services that's fairly new, you can actually take these designs too, and you can shoot them straight to local printers as well. So when you get into these, sometimes you might see this information uh, option show up. Your design is available for print orders. You can actually do that directly from command now, which is kind of nice, okay? So today we're just gonna focus on the design portion. Let me again, move my Zoom window. Boy, that thing just gets in the way. Okay. So gang, I'm just gonna take a look at some of the different pages, just so you can kind of see the previews. If I just click on these one by one, uh, this entire document, and you can see as I scroll down over here on the left, there's, there's a lot of pages in here too as well. Uh, it's got about 20 something pages in there. Okay, all kinds of different ones. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make our pre-listing packet. Okay, and each of these individual pages is actually its very own template. So what we're gonna do is we're literally just gonna add a page one at a time as we go through and preview this to ultimately build out kind of our whole pre-listing packet. Again, remember the pre-listing packet, the advantage I mentioned of that is you can send that out. It's all the generic information, kind of the, the you know, process uh, the clients are going to need. Um, and all you really have to do is, is you know, uh, switch your name up in that one, all right? So, but this little preview window over on the left, if I just click on those, it'll show me a preview over on the right. This one actually has kind of some instructions. So this is like the template cover page, uh, the actual instructions down below that. But if you, if you go down one more, you'll notice page three is actually the very first usable page in this particular uh, template, okay? And you'll notice as I pause over here on the left, I've got a couple options here. I've got apply to this page. So if I, if I had a blank page in there, I could put it on there. But this little plus sign just says add to, an, uh, or excuse me, add new page. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And what it's gonna do if I expand this area down here on the bottom, see where it says pages and I've got an up arrow. If I open this up now, I, I'm actually building out my pages, okay? Now I will tell you something, uh, <laughs> uh, command for some reason has a, a habit of putting in a, ver a blank page right at the beginning of every template. Don't know why it does it, um, but we're gonna get rid of that. I can just simply click on that little down arrow and hit the trash can icon. Are you sure you want to delete this page? Yes, I do. And boom, now we've got page one. So I'm, I'm going to leave this little area down here up so that you can see as we go along and we add pages, you're going to see our presentation building up page by page by page, okay? So again, we'll just kind of go through and preview the content. Uh, we definitely want this one. It's got like the, uh, the outline on, on how the uh, presentation is built. I'll click on that plus sign again. You'll see it added down here, okay? You guys kind of get that process. This next page, now remember, this is, this is property specific. 
and we're, we're staying away from that right now on the pre-listing packet, okay? So on this one, I'm actually not going to add that one. I'm actually not going to add a few of these. I'm not going to put in a neighborhood snapshot yet. We'll come back to those. I'm not going to put in any uh, comps. Oops, thought I clicked on that. Give it a second. There we go. Not going to put any comps on there, again, because it's very it's property specific, and we want a very easy packet that we can easily, you know, change to a different name and send it right out to a client, okay? So the next page, your, your needs come first. Absolutely, that's all about the client. Again, click on that plus sign. You see it added over here on the bottom. Uh, what is the actual process? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to shrink down this little window here, and you guys can see more of the page. How's that? All right, so the next page, my app. Absolutely, you want to make sure you're advertising your KW app out to everybody. Uh, click on the next page here for uh, this is your marketing plan. Absolutely. And that's all I'm doing again. I'm just going to go through these one by one and click on any of these pages to add that is not property specific for now. Remember, not property specific. We will get to that, I promise. All right, here's your media plan. Absolutely. Strategic promotion. Come on. Sorry, commands just run a little bit slow. But you guys get the process. You kind of go through here, just kind of preview the page by clicking on it on the left. The bigger preview shows up on the right. And we just click on those plus signs to add those pages. About uh, a little over halfway done here. Bear with me. Real expert, real expertise. Absolutely. I want to promote myself. Now, again, I notice I said that, that we might have some statistics that change. This was a page I was mentioning uh, before. This is like how many years of experience I have, how many clients as I've served. Excuse me. Um, if you don't know your repeat clients or clients served in, in uh, you know, a particular year, that's okay. We can change these numbers, you know, like uh, days on the market, things like that. Whatever statistics that you want to highlight. Now, we do have another one here. If you have availability or accessibility to these numbers, that's fine. I've heard some agents say that they that they were able to track these down. I've heard some agents say that they could not. Like, you know, this is all about the market. This is like a whole marketplace snapshot. So in a neighborhood, it's easy for us to get that information. But if you have a hard time finding this information, I would just not put this page. I'm going to go ahead and leave it out. But if you can get that information, that's great. Uh, credentials and awards, we definitely want that. Show these people what we can do. Uh, let's see, leading the industry. Yeah, oh, I scrolled up too far. <laughs> Lost my plus sign. Okay, we've got a couple of, of property specifics. This could be, you know, your history of houses, maybe your featured properties, you know, like down here, featured listings, et cetera. Okay, again, we're gonna leave those out for now. Uh, this next page, this is a great reason to do a, a client testimonial landing page. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, definitely check out my YouTube video or uh, just get a hold of me. I'll walk you through this. I am definitely going to put that on there. Client testimonials are great. All right. And just bear with me, gang. I know this is a lot of pages. Just getting them added in here, but you just definitely want you to be able to see the process. Okay. And again, the great thing about doing this is you really, this pre-listing one, you only have to set it up one time. And then the only thing you update is the name. Once again, you can see, uh, here's that page I mentioned, you know, if you have a good printer, you're sending this out, you wanna keep the black, that's great. I will show you when we get in there though, on how to update that thing and, uh, and actually get rid of that uh, black background, okay? All right, so if I expand out that area down below, now you can see as I'm scrolling to the right, we added all those pages and we are up to about a 20 page uh, pre-listing uh, packet, okay? Not too shabby, not too shabby. So what do we do with these things? Well, we're gonna wanna start editing these. So I'm gonna click on page one, so we'll get over there. Oh, hang on, did I delete my other one? I think I may have, bear with me gang. Put this guy back in there. Now, the cool thing is you can see what happened is when I, I added it, added it to the back, you can click and drag on these and you can actually reorder them if you want to, which is what I'm doing. I'm just bringing this page one back all the way to the beginning. 
Looks like when I deleted that spare page, it deleted my other page as well, two pages at once. All right. So gang, I'm gonna kind of shrink these areas up and give us you know, a little more working room here. And we're gonna go through like how to edit this actual information, okay? It's actually very simple. Uh, anytime that you wanna edit text in this design area, like up here, uh, remember this is my generic template. So for now, uh, I'm just gonna change it to my name. I, I don't have a client like as, as of yet. So I'm gonna change it to my name. And then when I do get a client, I wanna send them this information. I would just come into this template again and just update it with their name as a different copy and shoot it off to them, okay? So I would just come over here and click on the text box, Marie and Chris Roberts, uh, that's not me. So when I click on the text box, I've got this option up here on the toolbar that's called the typewriter. See how it's kind of half black and half white. Uh, I think Marty Miller on his videos refers to this as the half eaten Hershey's chocolate bar. Um, if, that, <laughs> if that helps you remember visually what that is, it kind of does look like that. So I'm gonna click on the half eaten Hershey bar. And notice this little text box shows up over on the right hand side. And this is where I'll do my text editing, okay? So I'm gonna update this for myself. I'll go ahead and just say David. And then click on this next one down below it, do the same thing. Click on the typewriter option and go ahead. I'm just turn my cap lock there. That's just my personal preference. If you like to do this in caps and lowercase, that's fine. Uh, for me doing a lot of this stuff, I just keep it in uh, capitals, okay? Now notice when I just did that last change, a, a couple things happened. One, um, I, I lost the spaces where it said the prior people's names because I just have one. Also, my last name's kind of long, but this box was small. So it's kind of short right now. And it's not, you can see my, my last letters here, ELD kind of wrapped around. That's okay. See how the box has these little handles on the right hand side. I'm just gonna click and hold my mouse on that and grab it, and drag it out a little bit and it moves it over, okay? And then all I've got to do is just click and hold. Oops, sorry, my mouse is very sensitive. And I can just drag that up. Now, do you notice how it's got some purple lines that are popping out? Does everybody see that as I'm moving it around, those little purple lines? Those are alignment lines that help you out. So as you're moving the stuff along, as those pop out, it's basically telling you, hey, this is in the center of the page. This is aligning with the rest of your text on the left or the rest of your text on the right. So those are good little guides for you to use. So notice when I move it over here to David, I can get it just right. There we go. See how that line is lined up with the rest of that text? That's, that's how I know that it's got good alignment there. Now I'll let go to my mouse and it's good to go. Okay. So some other things I might want to do, uh, definitely want to update my Market Center logo down here. So I'm going to click on that graphic. And I'm going to go over here on the right hand side. We've got this toolbar over here, templates, images, text, icons, and I've got a logos area. So I'm going to click on logos. Now I've already uh, imported this in here. If you didn't, you would just have to go and go to images and add it in. But I've already got my logo. So when I come to my logo and I pause on it, you're going to see two buttons, the add logo, and then I've got a replace logo. Okay. I do always tell everybody, if you do not have anything selected over here, and I just come over here and click on this, it'll add the logo to this template, but then I've got to go over here and delete this other logo. So what I'd rather do is do what I just did there. See how I click on it, it gets the little selection box around it. And now if I come over to my logo and just hit the replace button, that's exactly what it does. It replaces the photo instead of just adding one into the template. And then I've got to delete the other one, move the new one over to the right place, get it all aligned properly. So it'll save you a little bit of formatting hassle there if you just do it that way, okay? All right, some other things I wanna do down here, I need my headshot photo. So kind of the same process, I'll just click on that photo and I'll come over here to the images button over on the left-hand side and click on that. And I haven't pulled it in yet. I've got some different things under images. I've got ad company or my assets. Now, once I start pulling, working in the design studio and pulling things in, it'll be in my library or my assets. Uh, under company, I've got some different things here. They've, they've got some stock photos, basically. Um, but basically, I need my headshot photo. So I'm going to click on Add. Uh, you can see you can pull it from multiple places. Actually, let me shrink my Zoom window down again. Yeah, those are all the graphics that are in the actual template right now. You could go to Facebook, you could go to Google Drive, you could go to Dropbox. I'm gonna click here where it says drag and drop or click to upload an image. When I click on that, it just allows me to browse my computer, which is exactly what I wanna do. 
I'm pretty sure I left my headshot photo right on, there we go, on my messy desktop. I'll just click on that, say open. There we go. And now see how that brings, it doesn't switch it right away, but it brings it into my image library. And now when I pause my cursor over that, I've got that replace image, two little uh, arrows, circular arrows that we saw before. And when I click on that, now I've got my, my headshot photo in there of my nice spiky hair, okay? All right, so that's kind of how you do the images, gang. Uh, the other thing I wanna do obviously is to update this text down here at the bottom complements of, I wanna replace first name, last name, obviously, with my own info. Um, I, I've got decent eyes, but I'll tell you, I, I use these glasses. They're actually not reading glasses. They're anti-glare glasses because my eyes get strained being on the computer all day. Um, but that's even kind of small for me to read. <laughs> okay. So if you're ever in these templates and you need to zoom in, you do have a zoom option over here on the lower right-hand side. See where it's got the percentage. Um, you can do zoom in, zoom out. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in a little bit, gang, and then scroll down. And there we go. That's a little bit easier to read. Uh, on my on my poor eyes. So same thing I did before, just click on the text, go up here to the typewriter option. And I'm just going to walk through this process of updating this with my info. So there's my first name, same thing, select the text box, go to typewriter, last name, Satterfield. And so on and so forth. Now, same thing, gang, you can see similar stuff to what I had going on before. My name was too long for the previous box. So I just, that's okay. I just come over here, these little handles, click and hold, and drag that over to the right. So it makes it bigger, but then it's also not lined up very well now. So I'm just gonna move it over there using those kind of guides. So I've got that guide, that purple guide underneath the line saying that it's lining up with my first name as well, and then let go of my mouse, okay? All right, same thing with all this text, click on the box, click on the typewriter, the happy and Hershey bar. I would go ahead and update my info. There we go. Um, download my app. Uh, this is where you would want to have probably have that uh, pulled up in the background. That's why I had another window here with my command open. If you needed to go back to your marketing profile and, or, and grab that KW app that I mentioned before, uh, this is where you'd pop it in. Um, I'm, I'm just going to take it out for now. But that's where you would uh, add that to it. Your email address. Mine is, oh, I can't just I can get rid of the uh, caps lock on that one. David Satterfield. I could type properly at kw.com. And then I've got my KW app or this would, if you're on a team, this would be your team one. So mine is David Satterfield Holmes dot kw at kw.com from my website. Okay. Just update that, save those changes, and boom. Now my information is updated. So I would just go through that process for each of the pages, gang. Um, there's a few, I'm not going to go through obviously all 20 pages, we'd be here all day. Uh, but on each of the pages, there are some specific things that I do want to point out. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, a couple different ways you can navigate. Let me zoom back out again so we can see the whole page. Uh, we mentioned before where you've got the pages over here on the left-hand side. If I click on that up arrow, that little uh, thumbnail preview shows below of all the different pages. I could certainly use that to navigate. Or you'll notice I've got these uh, little arrows here, a left arrow and a right arrow, and it tells me right now I'm on page one of 21. So I can just use these little arrows and go to the next page if I wanted to. Okay. Oh, now see, I, I don't know why it's deleting and adding uh, duplicates there for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this one. Don't know why command's doing that. It's a little squirrely sometimes, even for your tech director. <laughs> You, you would think the tech director would have less technical problems, right? I think I actually have more than anybody else in the office. All right. <laughs> all right. So again, th this is the pre-listing packet. So this is all stuff. It's basically all about the clients and information about us and KW. Uh, your needs come first. I would go through each of these areas and verify what it says uh, for a couple different reasons. One, uh, the generic pages, those are probably going to be spot on. There's probably nothing that you need to change there. That's okay. Okay, uh, here's the process. I, I bring this up, though, because if you're going to promise this process, make sure that this is things that you or your team and or your team do. And Joan's shaking her head right now, right? So because uh, you never want to get into the thing and, and the client say, hey, you didn't do so and so for me. And you say, well, I never told you I'd do that. I'm like, 
Yeah, actually, it was in your pre-listing packet that you sent me. So definitely verify that this is your steps for the process, okay? If there's one that needs to be deleted, you literally can just, you know, I'll do the last one here. Obviously, I don't want to lose closing. That's an important step, but you get the idea. I could click on it, hit my delete button. It would go away. I'm just going to undo that. It'll come back. But you can remove those. You can replace the text on those, put in your, your own text. Uh, maybe there's a couple of things, uh, pieces of value that you give to all your clients. You could put those in there, et cetera. Okay. But definitely make sure that is your process. Okay. Um, the app, this is another area that you're definitely going to want to update again. Here's the text box. It's got your KW download app. Uh, definitely make sure that you get your link in there. Okay. Again, that'll allow them to download, download your brand new KW app. And now you can see what they're do, kind of doing in the background. You get the notices on that in command. Okay. So definitely get that updated. All right. Just going through each of these pages here real quick. All right, your custom marketing plan. A lot again, a lot of the generic text here of the pages is probably going to be fine and spot on. Just looking for some stuff. Oops, come on now. Update. Here we go. Best in class promotional assets. Your media plan. I'm just checking too. The other thing to look for too, sometimes it depends on your screen size. Um, these templates get a little wonky formatting wise. So the other thing that I look for. Is just to make sure that everything's in alignment still. These look good, so I'll keep going. Again, just using those arrows to navigate to the different pages. Uh, there's your coming soon campaign, your just listed campaign, just explaining those process to the clients, open house strategy. Again, please make sure those are the steps you use, or if there's additional ones that you do, uh, that you put those in there. Let me get my uh, Zoom menu out of the way there. All right, it's in the details. Bear with me again. Here we go. So here's another one that you're going to want to update. This is the uh, your experience and expertise. This is kind of your resume that you can put out to your clients. So again, uh, definitely want to upload uh, your headshot photo. So again, just click on that picture. Go over here to images. Now remember that the last time I did this on page one, I already brought it in. So there's my headshot photo. It's already there. So I just click on the, the two arrows, the replace image option, and that replaces my name, okay? And then same thing we saw before, to replace the text, I just click on it, click on the typewriter button. I would update this, David Satterfield. Okay, and then down below, I'm obviously not the CEO and founder of Keller Williams. Uh, I'd probably maybe have a much bigger paycheck <laughs> if that was me. Uh, props to Gary Keller, though. Um, but again, you would want to come and update this information. It's got some credentials in here. So again, you can personalize that. Uh, if, you know, you want to put your degree on there. If you've got some other things that you want to do. Again, DBA logo, definitely get your correct market center logo in there. Uh, again, that was, if you click on it, just go to the logos area, just to refresh your memory on that. And then if you haven't pulled it in, you can pull that in or go ahead and do the replace logo like I have. Bada bing, there you go. But then here's the area where I mentioned that you might wanna change some of this stuff up, okay? You've got how many years in business you were in. Uh, I could probably claim 18 right now since I, I could claim my commercial side as well. We're gonna with Senior Richard Ellis, okay? Uh, total client served, again, I'm not an agent, but you know, how many agents have I taken care of? Uh, here at KW, I think we're, like I said, we're close to uh, 300. So, oh no, not 2809. Phew, 3,000 agents. That's a lot. <laughs> Joan, you guys might need to hire another teacher. <laughs> that's a lot of people. Um, but again, down below, if you get to this area and you don't have these stats, that's okay. Uh, again, you can always change this to whichever information you want it to do, uh, to put in there. So whether it's client served, uh, whether it's, you know, the, uh, the how many days on the market, your average for your listings, et cetera. So don't ever think that you're locked into what's on this template. I can click on that and go to the typewriter, just like any other text, and I can change that information, okay? All right, so we've got that page. We're on 12 to 20 right now. We'll keep scrolling through these so we can get to the, uh, uh, the, the credentials and awards, another great area. Now, the, by default, they have put in a bunch of Keller Williams stuff, which is good. Uh, this this template, they've uh, hopefully they'll update this. They only go up to two, 2019. Uh, so we're waiting on the 20 and 21 stats. But again, if there's more information that you want to put about yourself, you could kind of sprinkle those in. So maybe there's something I want to add. So rather than go and create the text boxes, 
Um, you could just copy and paste these. What I'm going to do here is show you how to, uh, to copy multiple items. So I want to copy a date and I want to copy a text placeholder. So I'm going to click on the first one. Then I'm going to hold down my shift key. And as I'm holding down my shift key, I'm going to click again and see how both of those boxes are, are uh, selected now. So I'm a keyboard person. That's how I like to copy and paste. So if I just do a control C, that's copy. And now if I do control V, you can see it pasted them in there. I can just drag and move them down here with the help of those little uh, purple guides that I mentioned. Boom. And now I can add my own little stat. So let's say 2020. All right. And then change the actual bullet. Uh, how about named, uh, oops. Oh, sorry, I had my caps locks on. <laughs> I'll say uh, name top tech trainer and KW. How's that? Give myself a little props there. And boom, now I've got my own little bullet there that you could add in. And of course, gang, you could grab these if you needed to intersperse them in between. You could just, you know, click and hold and move these around, et cetera, to get them out of the way or move them down if you needed to. So, but just to give you an idea, okay? Oops, get out of there. Probably need to drag that back. I want to leave it messy while we go, using those guides to line it up. Perfect. All right. So continuing on through our pages, that was our credentials and awards. Okay, leading the industry, just some more information about us and KW. All right, those client testimonials, those you're going to want to grab off of your uh, agent site. Um, or if you have set up a uh, uh, client testimonial landing page, you're going to have a class on that. Um, or I could walk you through it if you need help. But it's great because that actually uh, grabs, sends a survey to your clients, basically. And then you can get the text and you can copy and paste it in here. Okay. Uh, so I would definitely uh, put some client testimonials on there if you have some available to you. And if you don't, gang, okay, don't ever feel bad about asking for that. It's never a bad thing to ask a client for uh, some feedback on, on how you, you know, help service them. Okay. Keep on going here. Really, the one I want to get to is this is, you know, just more generic information. Uh, this one you're probably going to want to update. It's got a digital signature on there. So you could update if you've got a digital signature or if you just want to replace that and just put in your typed name on there in your title as well. However, you'd like to do that. OK. I'm going to go here to this very last page. And this one, I would definitely want to update, gang. This is all of your contact information. Same stuff we looked at before. I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over, but you get the idea. Uh, the DBA logo, you're going to want to update that as well. Uh, my issue is, is if you're printing stuff from home or on another printer and this black is just killing your ink, uh, you can always click on this. And where is, oh, hang on. I'm missing my menus because my Zoom window is in the way again. There we go. Okay. Why is that not showing up for some reason? I can't color text. Fantastic. There we go. Fill color. Okay. See how the fill color looks like the full moon up here on the top middle when I click on that. It's showing black right now. What I'd like to do is change this to white. Okay. Now, notice when you do that, all your white text disappears. So don't worry, it didn't go away. It's just white on top of white. But notice as I move my cursor down, see how it shows up, the text boxes show up, okay? So just click on those and we're gonna do the same exact thing uh, to go over here to the stroke color and it should be under library colors. Oops. Oh, it's down here at the bottom. My bad. Why is it not? There we go. Sorry. For some reason, my black was way down at the bottom there. Okay. Same thing. I would just go down. Again, the placeholder shows up as you move your mouse. Again, click on it's called a stroke color. And once you put it in the first time, the black always shows up. It's kind of nice. Again, I, I love all the anything on here that saved me a little bit of time. Okay. And then, of course, the DBA logo, I'm going to want to update that and boom. Okay. So that'll save you some printer cartridge ink if you need to do that or, or not drain it here at the office as well. Um, 
All right. So again, when you're done, a couple things I want to do here. Once we get this done, I'm going to uh, change the title. This is basically your file name. Okay. So we're going to call this pre-listing package. Now, if you did want to, if, if you created this, if you either looked at it or, you know, if you have a Rainmaker or you're on a team, uh, I, I want to make sure I say that because we're recording the session. If you're an admin or a marketing person, you have your team or your Rainmaker review that and they say it's okay, you can always click on this order print. Uh, I'm not going to do it now so I don't lose this, but uh, it would take you to the area where you can order prints just directly from command. Okay. The other thing you can do is click on the share option. It's, it, you, you could immediately post this to Facebook or to Twitter or to Pinterest, or you actually get the web link down here, which is kind of nice. You could send somebody the link, or if you liked it, you could always click on this download button. Uh, that's the nice advantage of this is the third option here. You've got get JPEG, get PNG. This third option is get a PDF. So if I click on PDF, just check your, your options. Do you want all pages? Yes, absolutely. Uh, standard web crawl quality. We want them to have a higher quality one in case they print it out. The file size will be uh, bigger, but that's okay. All right, we're going to go with high resolution print quality. Click on start download. And give it a second. There it goes. Shows up down here in my lower left hand of my screen. It's downloading. Okay. And you can see that's a pretty big file. That's actually for, oh, whoa, 42.7 meg. We want, might want to go with low resolution. <laughs> I don't even know if you can email a file that big. <laughs> I think the limit is 20 megs. All right. So wait for it to do the virus scan. Okay. Uh, that's just on my computer. Your computer may not do that. So when I click on open, and here we go. Boom. We've got a nice PDF. Again, let me move this out of the way for my uh, Zoom menu keeps getting in the way. And you can see it's got all those changes that we did earlier, gang, right? It's got my photo, my information on there, okay? Everything that we changed is going to show up. Uh, all right. So when I'm done with this, I can click on the Done button. How are we doing on time? We've got about 10 minutes left. All right, and now when I come back to command, when I go and I look at my print area up here on the top, we're still on the design templates. I've got email, social print. I'm going to click on print. You'll notice this pre-listing package is here now. And the cool thing is, is my very next client. You can do it one of two ways because I really don't need to change any information. That's why we did the pre-listing one, right? It's got all the generic information. If I wanted to, I could literally come in here and just go into it again, click on it and change the name. Or if you're the type of person that likes to save a copy for each and every person that you do, and that's not a bad thing to do, what if they lose it or, oh, I can't find your email, can you send it to me again? If I pause my cursor over this and click on these three little dots and get the menu, you've got make a copy. I'll go ahead and click on that. And it's a big file, so give command a minute here. That and I can, I can hear I can hear the fan on my computer worrying right now. There it goes. <laughs> Means my computer's working overtime right now with all those high quality graphics. And there we go. We've got a copy of a pre-listing package. Okay. So if I knew that this was going to go to Joan, I could just click on that same menu button, right? The three little dots. Click on rename, and let's call this uh, Joan Brandt pre-listing package. And then all I would do is literally click on it, come in here. And back to page one, the only thing I need to do is go over here and click on this these name boxes and update this to Joan Brandt. And I'm done, right? So every single time that you've got a listing uh, and, and or a, a client you want to send out a pre-listing package, literally change the name, send it to it. Change the name, send it to them. There's no reason to go and create that all over again, okay? So I, I personally think that's an awesome tool. I, I think it's been a little underutilized. Uh, in the office, which is why I was excited to do a class on it, okay? So that's the pre-listing packet. How about the actual listing packet? The process to change everything and edit it is exactly the same, okay? We're just going to grab different pages from the original template. So once again, we're going to go to this plus sign down here so I can add a project. I'm going to choose a print option. Say next. Give it a second here to pull up. 
All right, we're back to our listings. I want to keep my formatting the same. So definitely do it in the same template that you did before. And again, it's okay if you like one of these other ones. Again, this is just my personal preference. You might decide that you like one of the other ones. So I'll click on use on that photo template. And then same thing, gang. I'm just going to go ahead and through here. I'll grab that cover page and hit plus. And now I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to grab all of the things that were property specific, okay? So here's the actual listing page. Absolutely put that on there, okay? Here's our neighborhood snapshot. What's going on in Barton Hills? We'll update that. Click on the plus sign. All right, you put some uh, comps on there. Yep. And then further down, I think we had our like uh, featured properties or all our listings, whichever ones you wanna do. You can do either, excuse me, either both or none. Again, totally up to you. Um, you might you might be a team. You might want to you know categorize a whole bunch uh, or, or put a bunch of extra ones on there. If you do, that's cool. Uh, if you are a newer agent, you're still building up you know your uh, your database of listings. Then you know put your portfolio if you want to call it featured listings. I kind of like the formatting on that one. It's got bigger photos. Again, personal preference. Okay. All right, scrolling down. I think that's all of it. And then all we've got left is that contact page on the bottom. Okay. So now that we have to do the process, we know how to do it on the pre-listing packet to build the listing packet is a whole lot easier. Again, if I click on this down arrow where it says pages, I've only got eight pages now. And so this, this one might take a little more time to update because we're going to want to add um, all of the actual listing information. But gang, the method that we do it is exactly as we did before. Okay. So I come here to the listing page. Right. I just click on the text box. I'm going to update this. I've, I've got a house that I use all the time. Uh, it's one my wife and I looked at and fell in love with. I personally loved it because they had an amazing back deck and, and like a fire pit. And I love all that manly stuff. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and we'll do uh, oops, just replace uh, this with Larkshire Court. Oops. Don't have to use your uh, caps thing when your caps lock is on. All right. And again, if it makes it too big or anything, I just might need to, you know, move some of the stuff around a little bit. That's okay. I've got those guides on there. All right. Same thing here. Uh, let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit. I know it's hard to see. They've got like the, the property information, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, et cetera. Okay. Uh, this text you may need to update. I know that you can get some of this from doing a, a C, uh, was it a CMA in the MLS? You do a, a, a comparative market analysis. That's a CMA. Um, some of that stuff will give you some of this information, or you might, you, some of it you, for the statistics, like we saw, like the neighborhood statistics or your market statistics. Sometimes you could run one for now, like maybe April 1st, uh, 2021, and then go back a year and run it for April 1st of 2020. And it'll allow you to kind of do a little bit of math and figure out some of those numbers as well. I bring that up because some people are like numbers gurus and statistics lovers and that. If you're that type of person, that's just a suggestion on how you can get some of those statistics, okay? I don't want you to freak out that what is in this template you have to use. Again, you could update it with whatever market information you want to. It's very easy to do a market uh, snapshot, uh, excuse me, a neighborhood snapshot, <clears throat> excuse me, in command. But if you wanted to get that information, uh, that's one of the ways that you can find that, okay? The property photos. I'm Obviously, I'm going to want to update this property photo, okay? So if I click on that and go to images, and I click on add, scroll down here. Oh, so, sorry, wrong. Oh, <laughs> I had the wrong button, sorry. Not the images, but down here on the left gang where it says KWLS. Let me expand this out. Sorry, my uh, messy desktop is kicking through. This will actually get me to the, uh, the MLS. And now I can search by either listing address, MLS number, your KWLS ID, if it's a specific agent or a co-listing uh, co agent. So this one we said was 5448 uh, Lark, Shire, Court, Hilliard. Let's see if it finds that for me. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, there it is. Love that house, okay. So if I select this one, and then this is how you pull in your MLS photos, okay. You don't have to go and upload them manually, which is great. Give it a, it does take a minute, so give it a second, gang. But yeah, it's literally going to the MLS and it's dragging all those photos in here. I think this one's got about 30 photos or so. So don't stress if your computer takes a minute for you. 
but then I've got all these different options here. You know, I can replace the image with the front of the home if I want to. Uh, I'll scroll down here so you can see what I was talking about with this listing. What I love is just this back deck. Oh my gosh, I, th I think that literally just sells the house right there. Uh, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. <laughs> okay. So, but that's how you can get your MLS photos in here as well, gang. And you would just do the same thing for each of these pages. Okay. I did it on the front page, but then same thing when I scroll through to the different uh, areas here. Uh, for my featured properties, I would do the same thing, okay? Just pull up that MLS, uh, pump, punch in my addresses. The other cool thing is when you pull in the information, you, you're going to want to update, obviously, these other text boxes, just like we did before. But the cool thing is, is when you pull it up in the MLS, you have not only the photos over here on the left-hand side, you've also got listing details. So don't worry about going and, and printing stuff out from MLS because you need the information. You can pull it up all right here in command while you're designing this thing. If I click on listing details, there we go. There's the address, there's when it was sold last, the year it was built, uh, acreage, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, all the options, everything, gang, okay? And you would just take that information and just update it like here using that typewriter option that we showed before, okay? And you would just go through that process till you're done with this one, and then you would have the same options. And I would go ahead and once again, come up here to the top, and I would call this, listing packet. Oh, sorry, I got my caps lock on. <laughs> okay. And then again, I get done with that thing. I would just download the PDF. I'm going to use the standard web quality. So download downloads quicker this time. And boom, there it is. Much quicker. So when I had gone through that process and made all the changes, oh, I forgot to delete my blank page it throws in on it. I even warned you guys about that. <laughs> then you can see as I scroll through this, I've got all the different information, all right, and a nice printout. Same thing with my contact information down below, just like I had on the pre-listing packet, okay? And when I'm done with that thing and click on done, again, if I come over here to my print area, there you go. I've got my pre-listing packet, which is now my master template branded to me with all my information on there. All I have to do is change a person's name on it and it's ready to send out just like I did here with Joan Brandt. And then the listing packet, that does need to be uh, individualized. But now that I have one done, remember, click on the three dots, make a copy. And all I've got to do is update it with the new MLS information for the specific property. It'd be great if it's in the same neighborhood because in my neighborhood snapshot, it would stay the same, okay? All right, gang, so that, that's kind of the basics on, on listing packets and pre-listing packets. Uh, I, I love doing stuff like that. Again, the, the marketing stuff is great, but I think what is really cool is, you know, you can kind of sit down with us on a Saturday morning or Sunday morning with your coffee or tea or whatnot, spending you know, an hour or so just kind of designing one, but then you are good to go from then on. And that's what I love to be able to do, not just show you something cool and new to do, but also how can I save you time in the future. And I think doing it like that is a great time-saving tool as well, okay? All right, ladies, that is all I've got for today. Does anybody have any questions before we call it a day? That was excellent. Oh my God. Oh, thank you, Joan. I think I can do that. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a great tool. And, yeah, and I think sure. that uh, some of them are, are, like I said, some of them I'm finding as I'm meeting more and more with the, with the agents. Uh -huh. uh, what's being underutilized that I find a great tool. So that's that's what I'm trying to focus on on, on some of our training. So awesome, glad you enjoyed it. Stephanie, did you learn some good stuff? Is this recorded? Yes, it is, Joan. I'll be posting this to YouTube in the next day. Oh, or good, day. okay. Oh, yeah, because yeah, absolutely. People need to watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, when I put it on the Facebook thing, make sure you chime in. I'll even tag you on I it. I will, and, you know, oh my gosh, like it, I so. will, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Gonna run. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming, Stephanie. Thanks for coming as well. Sure. All right. Thank I'm gonna you. stop my screen share. And ladies, you enjoy the rest of your week, okay? We will. Thank you. All right. Take care.